Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is John. This report is for the 27th of May. Got some issues with getting our charts up, but uh, uh, finally got it to work. So what we had been talking about was the fact that Magenta had been staying well above yellow and uh, white NBI uh, below as well as our decaying uh, orange here. Once it gets below that 7.5, for me, is usually a short cover period. Uh, just from a practicality standpoint, because she becomes so close to uh, that proverbial dip right here that you look for for a bullish swing. And in fact, the pivot up took place yesterday, uh, reached the 23%, traded back off of it. And so again, nothing had changed from that same 4,000 picture uh, where we were saying above that, you know, definitely was much stronger long bias than not. But the extreme almost uh, red could pose some difficulties, but of course, excuse me, of course, that sets up the 4122, uh, which is 38% right above. Uh, but after a move like this, we usually get some type of consolidation. Of course, now the 4000 becomes that benchmark um, from a support standpoint. And as long as um, Magenta remains above its 25, clean, uh, but a pivot lower and uh, look out, we're likely to blow through the 20. So, and this is exactly what I was talking about uh, over the last several weeks. After you get this kind of a decline, here we're looking at the NQ, um, you get these uh, relief rallies where shorts are like, well, I'll take it and look for uh, the pop to attack uh, a secondary run. And you can see the NQ looking uh, just as good from its MBI readings, even though its uh, previous ones were a little bit softer, uh, which is why it made. Uh, new lows uh, where the S&P was uh, basically holding on and that beautiful orange dip below and red MBI above negative 13, green rising as well. Problem is, like we had before when we started with the last attempt at the 23%, uh, steel pushing all the way up to the peak levels here. So as soon as that fades, it's going to pose some difficulties, particularly at the same point where the midterm and short-term buyers, uh, well, short-term buyers will be uh, exhausted, but you look for long-term and mid-term buyers to uh, take over with the uh, green cross over red uh, would be the visual on that. But you can see all of through this dip, we've been in higher extremes, so none of them dipping below the red line, uh, expecting lows. And so once we started making all of these, it becomes one of those where you break the lows, and then you look for a return back to them and gauge where the strength is. Um, and in this particular case, that was off that previous dip. 1174 range and uh, getting above it from a macro stand but of course we can see it from a 50k 5k earlier uh, euro has been in that strong push after Lagarde and them were saying they're they're going to get serious about uh, tightening things up in euro uh, zone area even though the euro zone uh, is a disaster but I think what really uh, people are starting to see is uh, the, the rate of slowdown uh, from the US standpoint uh, as far as so many metrics uh, was a bit shocking and I think that uh, gave relief to the euro because it's like well we thought it was just the eurozone that was a disaster but maybe the US is uh, not going to be that far off so that's bolstered the euro but uh, right back into that comfort range where uh, at least they're not uh, in crisis mode where uh, we were at the 103 where it looked like uh, it could be uh, the absolute breakdown uh, of the euro completely. Gold from its standpoint again even though we're in this little bit of a push uh, still weakness ahead of it and again this gets into that bias of uh, presupposing that the US economy is going to slow much faster than people are realizing and that's going to be deflationary not inflationary despite oil 114 so pushing back up towards uh, the previous highs in late March and that's just going to be more pain at the pump uh, in a big way uh, and it's been a continuous build and it's probably not going to stop anytime soon. Um, this is the uh, bifurcation uh, with the blockage of Russia, lack of uh, cooperation from any OPEC states. Um, no one, none of them are going to object to these price tags uh, that can sell less oil and get a whole lot more for it than they were before. Um, <laughs> there's no complaint in that category at all. And that's uh, caused uh, yields to come off and there's been a lot more um, interest in treasuries and that uh, it's going to create a bit of a back and forth problem for the market because uh, it gives alternative uh, 
approach because if you're suspecting that inflation has peaked in or is going to move towards deflationary, uh, you know the the values that you're getting now for uh, treasuries potentially are worth it. Uh, Bitcoin was in serious world of hurt early on. It started its collapse uh, uh, literally after the close and started coming down broke the lows and went all the way down to that 27.8 and that's where it caught a lot of interest in a lot of articles saying how uh, what a good deal Bitcoin was at this particular point so oversold and that's created a bump uh, whether that's going to be uh, something that can hold on uh, we'll keep an eye out for based on what's going to great from a uh, 60 minute chart at least uh, from an NBI daily still looking okay and ETH, also another good one, uh, if we scroll back a little bit, uh, quite a bit, it fluctuated, but still around zero, and then it also began that same cascade lower before starting to build and then capturing that nice run going forward until filling back all the way to the early positive extremes, the beginning of uh, well, the secondary run. This is that uh, last positive extreme kind of filled pretty quickly on that first one, but then we have the dip that goes to the 1792 range. So it held up uh, slightly better than uh, filling that one completely. So we may see a little bit more softness from it uh, going forward here. And then from a uh, 50K standpoint, from that short signal, once that uh, magenta popped back above, uh, easy to get out of that setup. I'm working on uh, making the adjustments before. Uh, uh, indicators for next month come out so that uh, these red uh, adjustments on that will take those uh, scenarios into account and make the adjustment to flip back to a long setup earlier uh, in particular for these uh, should be back several bars where we pop above with the green over the magenta rising on MDI above 25 early and then also you're getting the uh, uh, green DOC over uh, cyan as well as red uh, so uh, that squared away and that will Prove the way those look out there. From a 5K standpoint, uh, again, it's just clean rollovers. This is where that uh, mean reversion and making the subtle adjustments, like there's still plenty of room to take some of these shorts and then easy enough to see that turnaround flip when the magenta moves back above and you get that, uh, like I've talked about, orange dipping below the 7.5. Um, you look for the continuation, particularly when you're over the 50%, under the 50%. Uh, it becomes more of an attack mode. So you get different situations uh, above and below that 50% uh, Morganacci level. Uh, but for the most part, this was just up and just some very soft retraces, uh, a little bit further breakdown, but overall uh, just imposing strength. That uh, MBI magenta leading almost all of uh, the way through it ended up with uh, some soft period. A little bit later, as uh, a profit taking, because there was a series of positive extremes here easy enough to go through um, and mark them. I like the ones where we begin a run of at least more than two uh, tends to get the longest one. This was the beginning of that stretch right here. And uh, you can see that's where we uh, literally came pretty darn close back to filling that one. And now uh, breaking down into that low, you can see we get all the way back to uh, that positive extreme coming in right over here. So that was the first one. And then the second one would be right about there, which is uh, the 4046 range. So, uh, ideal in that standpoint. All in all, uh, very impressive with the uh, up down motion that we're seeing on these, and it's pretty clean. So, um, I think that um, algorithmically uh, the market is behaving rather normally, despite what some people see as outside ranges of volatility. Uh, I think that. Uh, this most of this year has been fantastic um, from that trade standpoint with the volatility uh, overall uh, spectacular so we'll keep at it as always though I will update you on the Skype chat trade well talk to you later